Good morning, everyone. This is Musna from the American Stroke Foundation. Welcome. Um, please let us know where you're from and where you're joining us from. Um, we are going to talk about vision today. We have a live Q&A on vision um, and vision changes after stroke. This presentation is part of our virtual Next Step program. Um, the Next Step program with the American Stroke Foundation focuses on addressing the challenges that stroke survivors and caregivers may have after their stroke. And the virtual program is our, um, our mission to increase access to as many people as possible. So for more information, please join us on our website, americanstroke.org. You'll find links to our YouTube, Instagram, and uh, Facebook pages, and also to our blog. Okay. So why are we talking about vision? Um, vision is our most dominant sense. It's how we get the most information about the world in front of us. Um, there's a big, I think, um, there's not enough emphasis, I think, on separating vision from eyesight. So when a lot of us hear the word vision, we think, oh yeah, you know, I have great, I've got glasses, or I see 2020, um, but that only refers to one aspect of vision. So that refers to visual acuity or eyesight, how well you can see an object of a certain size at a certain distance. Vision is how well your brain uses the information coming in through your eyes to make a decision. So it's a lot more complicated. It involves your ability to see contrast, to see different colors, um, depth perception, the ability of your eyes to come together to focus on an object, the ability of your eyes to grow apart, um, the ability of your eyes to go from near to far. Um, if any of you before the stroke experience things like um, having one eye that kind of drifts higher than the other or having um, what they call cross-eyed um, then you know that like your brain has to work harder to get that information through your eyes so we have all vision related issues we're all born with a certain level of visual function and then after a stroke those issues that were going, or those challenges, I should say, that were going on before can become magnified after the stroke. And then after a stroke, you may have additional vision challenges as well, such as double vision, blurry vision, visual neglect, where you're not seeing one half um, of what's in front of you, um, or inattention, where it takes a lot for you to pay attention to either your periphery or your central vision. So I would recommend, you know, if you're noticing anything related to your eyes or getting information through your eyes. So if you're having trouble reading, if you're having trouble remembering what you're reading, if you're having trouble with seeing when you're driving or nighttime driving, if you've noticed sensitivity to light in a way that was different. Um, I really think that part of stroke rehab should include a, vision, um, a visit with a neurooptometrist as part of your evaluation per, um, and treatment plan. So a neurooptometrist neuro is not a formal designation. It just refers to a vision professional who has training in vision changes after a neurological event like a stroke. So since I mentioned optometrist, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the difference between optometry and ophthalmologists and also anyone else who works in the field of vision, such as occupational therapists. So optometrists are the ones that we tend to go to when we do our annual eye exam. They're trained to make sure your eyes are healthy. They make sure the signal is clear. Um, and then they prescribe um, prescription lenses to help correct an error in acuity or being able to see. Um, they also can make a general assessment um, of your, the, your eye health. An ophthalmologist is a medical doctor um, who specializes in eye care. So they're the ones who do surgical interventions related to eyes or eye diseases. They treat advanced eye, eye diseases, um, such as uh, glaucoma, retinopathy. So they're the ones that if you are having something related to the health of your eye or eye symptom, the ophthalmologist who is a doctor is the one that you're gonna be referred to. Now, once an ophthalmologist or an optometrist makes their assessment, usually the treatment part goes to an occupational therapist or a vision rehab therapist. So you can't actually be, 
you can, you can have training as a vision therapist, but that's not an independent profession. So occupational therapists who are trained to, again, as an Occupy, do um, spend time with you on anything that occupies your life, do a lot of the vision rehab, and their job is to take what the, doc, the information the doctor or the optometrist have given you, um, get an information from you on how the vision changes have affected your life after a stroke and bring those together into a plan on how to mitigate that. So whether with adaptive equipment or adaptive strategies. So a lot of people on the uh, rehab team, vision rehab team are occupational therapists or people who have had training in that. So that's important too. Um, the starting step is to get an evaluation if you've noticed any um, vision changes and you can do that really quickly to, in terms of finding a resource. If you just Google um, vision rehab clinics, you should get a starting point where you can start making those phone calls. Um, and as long as you have a medical diagnosis, that stuff is covered by insurance. So the first thing is taking an inventory of where your vision is and knowing that that's more than just your annual eye exam and then find getting a proper evaluation after your stroke. And then when you do your evaluation, you get a treatment plan and you can have um, vision therapy exercises, which are um, very specific exercises designed to train the vision system. So information comes in through your eyes and it goes through a whole gamut through your brain before you quote unquote see what you're looking at. And you can have challenges in any part of that journey. So it becomes really complex. So these exercises are designed to address the problem at the point of, um, at the, point of the challenge. Um, you can also do, because we have muscles that control our eye movements up, down, left, right, diagonal, you can also just do general exercises. Um, they can be called ocular motor exercises or eye exercises that train those muscles and make those strong. So if you notice um, one eye drooping or weakness, you can train that without a formal rehab plan. Um, and one of the things that we'll be doing on our um, on our YouTube channel and our website is having um, a demonstration of those exercises. Um, if anyone would like more information today, please just let me know. Um, and please start submitting your questions related to vision changes. I know um, that it can be something that kind of you don't think about till after because you're focused on your hand or your leg, but definitely if your brain is working harder to process the information coming in through your eyes, then that is drawing resources away from everything else you do. So you may notice headaches, you may notice decreased endurance, you may notice difficulty concentrating in environments with different lighting, right? So think about how that can affect your, um, when you go out to do grocery shopping or when you're trying to fill out paperwork. If your brain is working extra hard on just seeing, that's gonna take resources away from the thinking and the doing. So it's all about streamlining and making things more efficient. Where is my brain working hard and where can I make a difference? So Bobby says um, she had a left to right, left side stroke, right side eyesight on both eyes are gone. Will it get better? Um, suggestions to adapt to deficiency. Um, so Bobby, if you had, um, you know, you have to take into account your visual um, health history prior to the stroke. Um, and then depending on the type of the stroke, um, the type of stroke depends whether you're going to see improvement on that side. If it's a, you know, true neglect, you're not seeing anything, then that's something that you're gonna adapt to with strategies. So hopefully you've had a formal evaluation. Um, and if not, I suggest um, that's something you look into. But suggestions, the number one thing is getting used to turning your head. So, you know, you're, by your comment, like you are aware that vision on that side is not where it needs to be. So that insight is half the battle, right? So turning your head um, is the number one thing and making sure you're fully scanning your environment. Um, the second thing would be really looking around your house and, you know, putting your most used items and everything on the side where your vision is intact because you know you want to um, 
you want to conserve your energy where you can, right? When you go outside, there's a lot of stuff that you have to pay attention to that's not under your control. So you're going to be doing head turning, you're going to be doing extra processing. But at home, you know, your home is your home. So hopefully there's a level of familiarity there. So it's not a bad thing to like put things on your strong side in the bathroom so that you're reducing that cognitive load, if you will, and the energy you have to exert for something that's routine and save the energy for something that's not. Um, and if you wear glasses, um, they have something called prisms, which helps shift your um, what your visual field and what you're seeing to a more central place where it would be if vision were intact on both sides. So that may be something that you want to discuss um, to see if training on prisms is um, appropriate for you. And that is something that vision rehab will do. So that's those are my suggestions. Um, Aaron says, in KC, Alpha Point has amazing vision stuff. While they do not handle stroke care, they are amazing with vision. It took me three years to find them great doctor for vision. Thank you, Aaron, um, for that recommendation. It sometimes can take a bit. You definitely have to be your own advocate because the default will be to refer you to um, an optometrist or if you have age-related issues or anything um, that is not stroke related but is a, you know is related to the health of the eye and is degenerative you're they're going to refer you to ophthalmology that is the appropriate course of action so sometimes it's difficult to tease apart those differences um, but it's an important discussion to have vision health is part of brain health um, regardless of how our vision has changed our brain's default is still to get information through our eyes so that is what we need to do all right, what other questions and comments do we have? Um, so low vision is a little bit, you know, low vision can be, um, so low vision refers to a decrease in visual acuity that's not necessarily going to get better. So um, your ability to see objects around you at a certain size or of a certain color, um, that's going to be impacted. So low vision is kind of its own little um, domain on the side. So things like um, that we talked about when we talked about adaptive equipment, like bump dots that you can of color that you can put like on a white microwave, putting red bump dots to help you see the start button and the time button. Um, that's where things like that will be helpful. Also education on lighting. Um, lighting makes such a difference and I really didn't understand the full scope of how many things lighting can impact until I really became, uh, until I became an occupational therapist and until I started working with people who, you know, didn't have a lot of like wiggle room when it comes to where they're spending their energy. And they were burning through all of it working in environments with poor, inadequate, or not effective lighting and it was drawing more resources from them. So low vision um, specialist or an occupational therapist with low vision training are going to be really well versed in exploring lighting options with you. And that's a great option, even for people who, you know, after a stroke have other um, things going on that aren't necessarily just low vision related, they're stroke related. Okay. You're welcome, Bobby. I also want to, if Denise is on from our Lee Summit location, I just want to say hi to her. Um, I met her recently and um, she's been joining our Facebook um, live Q&A, so I just want to say hi to Denise and I'm glad you were able to join us. Um, so what are the questions and comments do we have? Um, where, you know, when you take an inventory of your vision, it's not, I don't want you to think of just like, you know, where your eyes are and what you can see. Some questions I want you to ask yourself and reflect on is, you know, how does your vision differ between different activities and tasks and jobs? How is your vision performance when you are reading and doing close work? How is your vision when you're driving? How is your vision when you are cooking? I want you to kind of take an inventory of how it differs between all those things. Another question you want to ask yourself is, how has your vision changed throughout your life? So for a lot of us, at around the age of 40, where you know our ability to go from near to far um, changes. And so we're going to need um, more for our eyes as we get older. That's just kind of the fact of it. And the stroke just adds a layer of complexity to that. So I want you to take an inventory, just like you would your medical history. What is your visual history? 
Another question I want you to ask yourself is, how has your vision been affected since telehealth? We've been doing a lot more stuff, a lot of us, um, virtually or online or telehealth. And that we can't underestimate that. Like that is, um, our eyes are getting used to a certain level of input at a certain intensity and a certain you know amount of time that we really haven't had to before. And so that affects our ability to concentrate. Um, I work with some um, stroke survivors who find it very difficult to do our sessions on Zoom. And yes, it's the format, you know, part of it is not being in person, but I think also if you dig down into it, a big part of it is also the visual demand, right? If after a stroke, you are focusing extra hard um, to see and process what's in front of you, then that's gonna affect your perception of the effectiveness of a telehealth session. So how taking stock of how your vision has changed since this move um, to telehealth and more virtual stuff is an important question to ask. How does vision affect your learning? Um, I think there it's getting better, but a lot of people when they were younger maybe got labeled with, um, you know, having an attention problem or being um, or having trouble learning or being, you know, not being as sharp as someone else. And if you really trace it back, it was actually a vision issue. Like if you're trying to learn and the letters are blurry or the words are blurry or things are moving around on the page, yeah, it's going to be difficult to pay attention. Yes, it's going to be difficult to retain information. Yes, it's going to be difficult to engage in that. So you really, vision is at the core of a lot of performance concerns. So how does vision affect your learning? Um, and then how does vision affect your decision making, um, especially in activities that involve a lot of senses um, and is very complex like driving. We're not aware of everything that our vision is doing for us, but if your vision changes and you're driving to keep yourself safe, you have to be a lot more conscious of, this, um, of the things that you didn't have to before. So answering those questions about your vision is an important way to take an inventory and then you can have a more effective um, conversation with your medical provider. So Aaron says, my stroke made me colorblind, but I've looked my, eye, but I've lorked my eyes and it's almost gone. Um, lasered, maybe? Worked? Oh, we worked my eyes. Okay, and it's almost gone. There are eight types of colorblind. I didn't know that. Well, I'm great. I'm glad you've been able to do something about it. Um, you know, I, actually, I just had a recent eye exam, and I was surprised that um, col uh, color perception was on it because that's not something every optometrist does, and it's certainly not what I've been used to in my annual eye exams, but they're definitely incorporating that more because it is um, it is an important piece of information to have, right? If you aren't able to s distinguish between background and foreground or the nuances of detail, it affects your learning and decision-making capability. It's a very complex process, and I think an annual eye exam um, hopefully continues to shift towards being a more comprehensive assessment of eye and vision health um, instead of just, you know, look at this chart and let's tweak some lenses. Um, Robert says vision therapist is a must for, is a must after stroke. Um, at the beginning with OT, they were working around the problem. Now, not at the problem. Now with my vision therapist, we're working at the problem, retraining the eyes. I have a left side vision cut. That's great. Yeah, a vision therapist or an OT who's trained as a vision therapist is, is amazing because they're trained in that. Um, and it's a dynamic process, right? I think, I think. I can always speak to the importance of vision, but it is definitely in my experience and always eye-opening, um, more often than not an eye-opening discussion when I really talk about the difference between vision and eyesight. Um, and if you talk about performance improvement, that's a really great way to get people's ears, right? We are talking about something that is impacting how you do everything else in your day. So regardless of whether you wanna wear glasses or not, the discussion is a lot bigger than that. If you want to perform your best and feel your best, vision health is a part of that. Um, Aaron says, so true. Yep, having someone trained in what it is you're seeking is important. Um, vision is actually something that I think, you know, it would, um, it would be, it would behoove every 
rehab professional to have a more working knowledge of what's going on with vision so that the appropriate referrals can be made. Because what seems like someone not following directions or having a thinking or memory issue can actually be traced to vision. So it's important to keep an open line of dialogue. If you are not seeing things the way you are used to, let someone know. That is something that can be addressed. And it can be addressed from, you know, a rehab retraining the brain kind of way, or it can be addressed from a how do I work around this kind of way, depending on what the vision change is and depending on what kind of stroke you had. But vision, I think, you know, for sure should be a forefront of the thing you discuss because it's going to affect your recovery journey with everything else. Um, Aaron says, according to Google, there are 14 definitions of blind. Blind doesn't mean you can't see at all. That is correct. Um, they're different, um, they're cut, you know, they're cutoff criteria on what w you can, for your visual acuity to be considered blind. That's only one type of blind. Aaron's correct. So, you know, you don't have to know the label. You don't have to necessarily know the, you know, fancy schmancy language. Just let your doctor know that you are having difficulty seeing and how. That's all you need to start the discussion, okay? If you have been recommended um, to have a change in your prescription, if you have new glasses, um, and if you have glasses with prisms, please stick with it. The initial process is very annoying and very uncomfortable, but it is because your brain is actually now getting the information to offload some of that demand, but your brain has gotten used to working harder. So if you change things for your brain, it will feel uncomfortable. You'll feel like the glasses are doing, the glasses are wrong. The prescription must be wrong. It's not doing what it is. But the only way for your brain to get used to it is to wear your glasses. Now that doesn't mean you can't, you know, address your concerns. You know, give it some time, make a log of it, and then reach out. You should always schedule a follow-up um, with your provider when you get new glasses so you have a standing appointment, and then let them know your concerns. And maybe adjustments have to be made. Um, but initially, it is uncomfortable when your prescription changes or when you have prisms. It's your brain retraining. It's part of the process. Um, Robert says, I totally agree with you on that. Oh. That's Melissa. <laughs> I was like, Robert, thank you. No, okay. Um, Melissa says, my stroke had a, my son had a stroke two years ago. He has aphasia and it's difficult when going to doctors with it because they have trouble understanding what he's trying to say. He wears glasses and I know he's having trouble seeing. Yeah, that's actually, thank you for that comment, Melissa. Um, so yeah, how do you communicate that um, when you're having trouble communicating? And how do you make sure, especially as a caregiver, um, or if a loved one has a stroke, that you're actually, you know, that you're actually getting the information and accurate information on what the stroke survivor's daily lived experience is. Um, so, uh, Melissa, if your son uses any type of communication, augmentative communi communication device, if he has like um, handouts where he can point to things, or if you have something on an iPad, um, whether he can point to pictures or words, depending on what level he is, or make sentences, I would add some vision related things to that, um, and then add some specific questions or pictures referring, so you can show like images of like blurry letters, or double letters and show those images. And hopefully, if he's able to, hopefully you find one of those methods will be one that he's able to give you feedback on. Um, but just including more of that into whatever communication system you guys have in place so that you can get as much detailed um, information. Now, if you're noticing things as an observer and a caregiver that someone is closing one eye, right, when they look at things, or someone is, you know, moving their eyes in a, what looks like an irregular pattern when they're reading or concentrating, you as a caregiver, you know, it is okay to support your um, your loved one in that discussion with the doctor. Like, hey, here's the information, you know, if your son 
whatever he feels comfortable verbalizing, go for it. And then it's also important to be like, as a caregiver, these are some of the things I've noticed. And I know that that reflects some change in vision. So what's our plan to address that? That's always the question, right? That's a question you want to explicitly ask. I've shared with you and the stroke survivor and my loved one has shared with you that this is a concern. What's our plan to address it? Thank you for the questions and comments so far. What other um, changes? What changes have you noticed after a stroke? Um, what are some strategies that have helped you? The vision therapy exercises, um, just like wearing a new pair of glasses, have a little bit of a learning curve. And I say that as someone who's been prescribed vision exercises and I've consistently ignored it, um, it can give you a headache. It can make you uncomfortable. It's because you are you are literally exercising a part of your body. So think about if you haven't exercised in a long time or moved a way, you know in a specific way in a certain time, and you go to the gym and you do a very specific exercise. Like I'm going to work my shoulders today. I'm going to work my you know quads today. I'm go and you're going to get sore, right? You're going to feel it. Same with vision exercises. When you start, a lot of people report nausea or headaches or fatigue. So when you get your exercises, schedule them, make the system work for you. Schedule them at a part of the day where you have time to do a little recovery period after. Don't do it at the beginning of the day if you know it's gonna derail you for the rest of the day. Do it, a lot of people like to do it before they go to bed because then they feel like they can get adequate recovery. But you know, your eyes are controlled by muscles, um, vision uses your brain, and everything that's coming in through your visual sense is being processed by the rest of your brain and body. So it, sh it should, and it does sometimes feel like a full body workout, um, even though you're just quote unquote moving your eyes. Um, Um, Aaron says, yes, ebooks are good to keep a person awake as they rest their eyes. Yes, for sure. Um, so some of the strategies in working with um, patients or participants with vision changes after a stroke in terms of making the experience um, more comfortable is we, you know, we definitely make the lighting strategic. So if the lights don't need to be super bright and super overhead to do the exercises, then we don't. Um, we have Altoids or strong mints on hand. Those are really good to help with the feeling of nausea. Um, we have cold compresses on hand too. Um, so, you know, having, setting yourself up for success, that's the bottom line. And as always, if you have concerns or if there's a significant barrier to you doing the prescribed vision exercises, let your provider know. That's part of their job is to help you problem solve. Okay, so um, when we talk about vision changes after a stroke, you know, it impacts our performance. So let's say you are a student um, and you have to do schoolwork. Or as an adult, your job requires a lot of reading, either paper or um, the computer. There are lots of accommodations. There are lots of ways to filter the kind of light that's coming in through your device. Um, but there's lots of devices too that can help, like e-readers, um, programs that can speak the words back to you, um, magnifying devices, have that conversation. Part of your work accommodations should involve um, the capability to address vision challenges. Schools should have a place to discuss when someone is having a vision challenges. Because we've talked about before, strokes can impact, there's no age, um, there's no age, you know, that you have to be to have a stroke. Kids have strokes all the time, but, um, if it's affecting your work or your school, there are accommodations in place, okay? There's either a department or um, one consultant that can kind of go around and do an assessment and get you the stuff you need to be able to perform your best. So definitely open that dialogue. Okay, what other questions do we have? I think we sometimes think about vision, like when it comes to like, you know, vision health is important, but you ask any like elite athlete or performer, like they don't, they take vision seriously. I mean, whether you have to look, you know, if you, um, 
for leisure if you do a lot of hunting or if you like to shoot guns or if you do archery, anything that involves visual focus, you can be sure that they've they've given thought to their visual health. And so after a stroke, like I said, um, you know, if you meet someone who's had a stroke or if you have a discussion with your doctor and you happen to be of older age, please make sure that you're not getting dismissed and that your vision concerns aren't getting dismissed as a process of aging, right? Um, there's a lot of vision changes to, for various reasons and there's a lot of overlap. And yes, it may take time to tease it apart, but you also don't necessarily need to know, you know, this for sure is what causes stroke related or not to get the help you need. So I would encourage everyone to, to start that dialogue and really take an inventory of their visual health. Um, anytime, also, if you see if you see sudden bright flashing lights, um, you need to get yourself to the ER immediately because that is an optic nerve issue. Um, so that's something you definitely don't want to wait on. Okay. Kind of last call maybe for questions and comments. Um, next week, we're going to talk about physical movement and exercise after a stroke. Um, so we all know that, you know, movement is essential to keeping us healthy. Um, rehab professionals have a saying, motion is lotion. Um, but we also know that after a stroke, it's easier said than done, right? So next week, we will be talking about um, challenges and exercise after a stroke, problem solving together. But that depends on, you know, getting questions and comments from all of you out there. So please let us know what you'd like to talk about next week and please join us so we can address what really matters to you. So physical movement exercise next week. Um, and if anyone has any questions or comments after this live Q&A, um, please let us know either on Facebook or on our website and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I think the take home message for sure is that vision is more than eyesight. Um, vision changes after a stroke, even though they may be common, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, oh, I, you know, I don't want anyone to hear like, oh, that happens. That I mean, that happens to everyone. Yeah, it happens to everyone, but it's happening to me and I, I want a collaborative plan for it. So make sure your voice gets heard. Um, and there's always a way to, to work with it to wherever you are, um, to be able to create an environment and a daily experience that makes you feel good about things. Marty says, thank you, a very good program. Thank you, Marty. Okay, um, I think that's it. So please join us next week, respond with questions or comments for this week, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.